Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be talking to you about type 2 diabetes and obesity. And honestly, this could be an hour or whole day talk. So I'm going to be focusing on three questions that I often get asked in my clinic. So by way of introduction, uh, my name is Sun Kim, and I'm an endocrinologist here at Stanford. I do both clinical work and research in the area of type 2 diabetes. And with my patients, these are the questions I often get asked. What is my target weight? How do I lose weight? And how long do I need to be on medications? Before starting on these questions, I always like to start with the definition of obesity because I know that term has a lot of connotations and definitions. Clinically, we define obesity as a condition characterized by excessive accumulation and storage of fat in the body. And this excess accumulation can have health consequences and can increase risk for diabetes. Clinically, meaning when you come to the clinic, we are not measuring your body fat, but we measure something called a body mass index, which can be a surrogate measure of body fat. And we do this by measuring your weight, your height, and then we make a calculation called body mass index, which I'm sure you have heard about. And there are different categories of body mass index to define someone as being um, overweight, which is a body mass index or BMI of 25 or greater, or obese, BMI 30 and greater. I show you this chart to show the different categories of body mass index. And currently in the United States, it is estimated that over 70% of the U.S. adult population is either overweight or obese. I know for a lot of my patients, they feel down about themselves because they are overweight. And I always bring up this statistic to show that it is a common thing currently in the United States. I also want to highlight that in certain racial and ethnic groups, the cut points for body mass index may be different. For Asians, overweight is defined as a body mass index of 23 or greater. Now, starting in on our first question, with the background that I've given you, what should be your target weight? You know, with my patients, I always like to individualize weight goals. I do also like to first start out by talking about weight and obesity and how the excess weight for a given individual may affect their health. I like to do this because I think it's important to follow the improvement as you lose weight, and that can guide our goals for weight loss. The good news is glucose control ge generally improves with any degree of weight loss in most individuals. If you want to know a good uh, initial target for weight loss, I often tell my patients to aim for 10% weight loss to start out. With. That doesn't mean that's the end goal, but I think that is a good starting goal because many um, PACS research has suggested that losing 10% of your weight, especially if you have diabetes, can have a meaningful impact on glucose and other health measures. So the second question I often get is how do I lose weight? And of course, this is a big, big topic and I can only give you the highlight, but I will tell you that there are four sort of main pillars. Of course, there can be many more things I can add here. First, I think it's very important to have an eating plan. That is foundational for weight loss, an exercise plan, a sleep plan. And if you're working with, with a physician, it may also include a medication plan. I know there's so much different advice about what you should eat. Um, and you get this advice from everyone, including the internet. I will tell you there are a lot of debates, a lot of controversies, but no one would disagree on limiting added sugars. And you can find how much added sugars 
are in foods, especially packaged foods on the nutrition label. I also recommend uh, decreasing refined grain, either processed grain, like white rice, white bread, white pasta. And I encourage you to increase your non-starchy vegetables, basically vegetables besides potatoes. For exercise plan, just create one. A good initial goal is to try to exercise 150 minutes per week. That's 30 minutes, five days a week is another way to look at it. And try to do moderate intensity um, activity where you are somewhat breathless during the exercise. Now, sleep is so, so important. Um, there is no you know, right number for every single person, but in population studies, seven hours seems to be the magic number. However, you may be someone who's lucky who needs less sleep or someone who needs more sleep, but you just need to get the right amount of sleep for you. And then um, there is also a medication plan. So that comes down to my last question. The first thing I want to let you know is if you have diabetes, more likely than not, you will need a medication for glucose control. The good news is we now have several classes of medications that not only help you lower your blood glucose, but can also help you lose weight. We don't have a lot of time to get deep into all the different medications. But there are sort of three broad categories right now. Two of them, you know, mimic proteins made from your gut to help you lose weight and control your blood glucose. There's another one where it's a transporter on your kidney that works by having you urinate out more glucose. So I put some examples here and something that you may be able to look at. So based on medications, one of the questions I often get is, how long do I need to be on medication? I will tell you this, if medications help you lose weight and you stop taking them, in general, you will regain your weight. Even if you lost weight without medication, it is likely up to 80% of individuals will regain all the weight that they lost by five years or sooner. I would not see medications as a crutch, but as a tool that can really help you change your lifestyle and be the healthiest that you can be. Thank you for listening.